Number 14 through 16. We'll do these three together because they're, they're related to one another. The first question asks, what is the average force applied by the rubber band as it pulls the string from the car's drive axle? The way this works is, here's the rubber band. The rubber band is attached to a string right here. The string is wound around this drive axle. If you spin the drive axle backward, this point on the rubber band stretches to right there. And in the process, this much string, this is a 0.1 meter distance, that much string goes around the drive axle. So the string that was here is going to wind up here. And the string that was there is going to be at some point around the drive axle. Now the question is asking for the average force applied by the rubber band as it pulls the car's drive axle. We get that from these two numbers. This is a very simple question. This is the force of the rubber band at the moment when the string is released from the drive axle. This is the force of the rubber band when the string is fully wound. So as you can, as the car is in this picture, this, four newtons, is the amount of force, the amount of tension in this rubber band right now. Now if you pull the rubber band, if you stretch it from here to here, then there's going to be 12 newtons of tension in that rubber band. So as the rubber band pulls the string off, the force in the string, you know, the rubber band tension is transferred to the string, the force in the string is going to drop from 12 newtons down to 4 newtons. And to get the average force, you just average those two numbers, 4 plus 12 divided by 2. Add them up and divide by 2. So when you do that, you get the first force, the, the starting force, the final force, divided by 2, 8 newtons. Number 15 asks, what is the distance over which that force is applied? Well, that's, again, that's really straightforward in this question. Um, when you stretch the rubber band out to the, the position it would be in when the car is ready to go, the rubber band would be stretched to right there. And right at that moment, the, if you let go of the wheel, the wheel's going to start turning. And as it does, the rubber band is going to, you know, unstretch. It's going to tighten back up again until it gets to there. So the distance over which that force is applied, the rubber band is going to be right here when it starts applying its force. And then it's going to stop applying its force there. The distance is 0.1 meters. So this diagram was to try to show that. There's a 12 newton force applied right here, and then by the time the rubber band has snapped back to here, there's only a 4 newton force applied. It's been applying this variable force over a distance of 0.1 meters. Number 16, how, how potential energy, it should say how much potential energy is stored in the rubber band when the string is fully wound, assuming 100% efficiency. Uh, that's an okay way to say this question. I wish I had stated it as how much work is done in stretching the rubber band when the car is wound. They're really getting to the same thing, but you never know how much potential energy is in there. All you can say for sure is how much work you did to put that potential energy in there. And the work that you do is done by applying a force from here to there. Work equals force times distance. So we apply a force here. When we start to stretch this thing back, we apply a 4 Newton force. And then we stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. We're applying a stronger and stronger force. And by the end, we're applying a 12 Newton force. As we figured out, the average force was 8 Newtons. So that's the number we use for our force. The distance that we use is 0.1 meters. So the force, or sorry, the work, or the amount of energy that we use to, to stretch this back, or I guess you could say the potential energy in, this, in the rubber band, is 0.8 newtons times 0.1 meters, or sorry, 8 newtons times 0.1 meters. And when you do that, you get 0.8 joules.